Hey guys, it's Danielle and Lucio from the Prestigious Photo Co. Lucio and I have decided to take a road trip to Springfield, Missouri this weekend. Follow along to see what we're going for and what we get into. And we have made it to St. Louis. We are finally out of Illinois into Missouri. Um, we've got a couple more hours of driving to go before we hit our hotel, but we're feeling pretty good still. Good morning, day one of our adventure in Springfield, Missouri. We got in late last night. We are actually here for the Moore Expo which is an overlanding expo. We're gonna be checking out some fun gear and hopefully buying some stuff for our honeymoon later this year um, as Lucio dances around. Heck yeah. All right, so I guess we just start. <clears throat> I can't for this. We've been seeing those a lot. They got a picture of the map on the inside too. What? Look at the back wall right there. <laughs> wow, look at this. <laughs> Two gas burners and sink. Yeah, somewhere to put yourself. Damn, dude. Wow. Real temporal paint heater. Yeah, I mean, this guy's so good. Oh, wow, look at it. You can come, climb oh, in. So you, you, have, you don't have to be outside. That's how it gets in. Wow. So that's an interesting idea. Patches. They kind of bolt their um, oh. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of oh. tray. Built by CB Adventures. Oh, okay. See, they, they have it too. Yeah. That's the move. We'll see if you can find it here. That's the move. Man, this thing is Man, it's a diesel. Oh wow, this guy has a whole rail. So you could probably put like your phone like anywhere. Oh yeah, you put anything on there. Wow. And I He's got everything like customized in here. Let me see. He's got a hover like open. What? Oh, yeah, you can scan the you know, QR code. Wow. Everyone has their patches. Alright, it's our collection now. Thanks. Appreciate it. Well, awesome. we'll see you down here. Definitely. How are you? It's a nice color. <laughs> nice. Oh, a clear different top? Yeah. Oh, man, it has to get hot. Hmm? It has to get hot. Wow. They, are, they run it all the way. That's crazy. I wonder how it looks in there if you could like take it out and put it on like easy so it looks like it's clipped onto the handle it goes in somehow yeah yeah it's drilled in i think girl it's one of it's modded everything's probably modded <laughs> Here. Here. Hold up, how does this work? Oh, they build it around drawers. I was like, this is huge. Maybe not for this. <laughs> Okay, so we just finished day one of the Moore Expo for the overlanding. Uh, 
We're a little tired. We did about 10,000 steps across the fairgrounds today, back and forth. Talked to a lot of vendors. We yep. got a lot of information. So much. So tonight we go back to the hotel after grabbing some food, maybe some drinks, and sort through it. And yeah, to see if we can make a decision on what we want. So much, guys. It's, it's not even funny. I have learned so much about camping, vehicles, lighting, tents. It's overwhelming. But overwhelming it was a, a lot of fun. Yes. So maybe we'll make a video of us covering some of the things that we learned and share it with you if you guys are interested. And Let we'll go from know. there. All right. Until later. Later. So we are day two of the More Expo. And this morning we are actually already on the road. We just started the S'more Rally, which is a course you have to follow without a GPS. You have a driver and a navigator with a book of directions with some landmarks and de mileage distance between each point. So we are currently trying to see how well we work together on this. Um, we've got some off-road parts coming up, so hopefully we'll have some fun footage from that, see if our truck can make it over everything. Stay tuned. This is one of the pages in the book that we get to follow. Degrees. Oh. <laughs> so we're s oh god 19 degrees we're pretty much facing the ground I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand while you guys come with me. So, uh, see my fat ass can fit through this sh stuff. Uh, well. uh, guys, I'm not not flexible anymore. Uh, I got a couple pictures of us crawling through. Alright. <laughs> Definitely like smaller shoes, not boots. Yeah! It's not for me because it's crashed. Oh. <laughs> I got tagged on the back. You wanna see it? It's right here. Oh yeah, you're right. You can't quit now. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no shot I can climb through that little thing. <laughs> Guys, you can go down here and climb your ass. I mean, I'm sorry, yourself. <laughs> All the way through this. Pretty cool. St. Louis, you got something going on here. It's working. Let me tell you this though. If you're scared of fights or claustrophobic, the same for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> you can do it. <laughs> That's pretty steep. On, Don't scare baby. her. <laughs> it's not steep. It's easy. Easy money. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta put my cell phone in my pocket again. Are you coming down too? Yeah. Are you gonna record? Yeah, I'm recording now. Wait, I'm gonna knock down that person. Go first. No, here, this way. <laughs> All right. Hey everyone, as you can see, we're in St. Louis. We made it to the Arch. Uh, we've been here for a little bit, decided to explore St. Louis on our way home, saw the City Museum and did, ate some good barbecue. Walked around here for a little bit, Lucio got some photos of his truck, uh, <laughs> which he was very happy of. And I think now it's time to head back to Chicago. Hey guys, we're home. Danielle and I are happy that we actually took that trip. We ended up finding out uh, a lot of things that we want to acquire whether it's uh, for, for the camping trip that we're gonna be doing uh, in, for our honeymoon. And we have a lot of things to cover, but we won't try to drag this out too much because it's, it's a lot of information. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier in the video when we were out there, definitely information overload. So let's start with tents because that's gonna be the main focus of this because that's what we're the main, the main thing we're gonna need right now. Yeah, so originally my thoughts were Let's get a soft shell because of the price point uh, and just because we were trying to keep a budget, right? Yes. And soft shells are typically uh, cheaper than the hard shell ones. Right. So I was thinking, okay, uh, let me just focus on the soft shells. I figured the hard shells were just so out of reach. And uh, for us, the budget, you know, being between fifteen to to uh, $2,000, I figured that's a good price point and a soft show is within those price ranges. Um, but then while we were there, we started seeing that everybody that initially did this for sure, like actually did it all hard shells. That was number one. The, the second thing that I find or found out was the soft shells. Yes, there are some good ones, but then they're lacking certain things that we found interesting on the hard shells, right? Yes, and also for our price range for a soft shell, they weren't the quality we were hoping for. Right, and a good example, right? The the fabric, I guess they use. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to put any manufacturer out there, so I'm not going to say names, but there was a manufacturer that was there. Uh, the tent was within budget, uh, but for the price that they were selling it for, the quality just wasn't there. The material is very thin. Like a lot of the hard shell, better quality tents did not let a lot of light in. Lot let a lot of light in. Like especially so it's better sleeping. This was almost it wasn't see through, but like it was it let all the light in. There was no padding around the edges. It was it was just your bare bone. It it counted as a tent, but barely. Yeah, there was other things that I actually really appreciated from uh, another brand um, that I actually did really like. And I will give them a shout out because it was, uh, I think it was called 4x4 Colorado. Yes. Um, wow. Their, their, their presentation that they had there, they had, I think, three tents or, or maybe two. Uh, it was great. I think it met all of the criteria except the price point. Um, they had attachments on the actual tent that made it more appealing to me where we can put the ladder not just on one side. We could do it on either side of the truck or in the back. So it made it super easy just in case, you know, if we want to reconfigure it. Uh, module was the word that I like to throw around while I was there. Um, we want to be able to disconnect things as we go along or move things around. And they were able to initially provide that. Um, anything you wanted to add to that? No, they, they also had, as far as presentation, they had the tents. Most people had their tents on top of a truck to see what it would actually look like mounted, which was very cool. But you didn't really want to crawl up into someone's tent to see it, to see what it was. Cause a lot of people were actually sleeping there. These guys also had it out on more ground level, just up on a, like a little table. So you could see the tent like 
and it was just for display for you to get in for you to actually be able to touch and feel and it wasn't someone's actual personal property and I like that because when I want to buy something especially at a higher price point I want to be able to really see if it's quality I want to be able to touch it and play with it and see if I like it yeah um so their tent the one we both kind of really like was which was hard shell so now we're looking at hard shells right uh their price point I believe was 29 it was 2800 and that was for the clamshell style, which we found the expo had a ton of what they called storytellers, people who do this often, who've been doing this for years, who really kind of have an idea of what works best. And we noticed like 95% of these people with their rigs, they had a clamshell hard shell tent. So we figured if we're going to do this, let's at least look at the same thing mm -hmm. that all the experts are using because there's got to be a reason they're using it. Yeah. So kind of leading into that uh, while doing my research, uh, and as far as like getting the tent, right? So now before we get the tent, we need to get the bed rack. Um, we, or I thought initially that I can get away with, uh, getting a seven inch, uh, bed rack that's initially sits from the, where the bed is all the way to where the mount, where the tent will be initially sitting on. And that will make it where the tent is actually flush with the roof line of the truck for for aerodynamics that's what that was my thought but i'm realizing if i get that how are we going to mount the awning because the awning needs to be above that because we need it needs to be taller than we are yeah so, so i'm kind of back to the drawing board i didn't see at least not from my memory at least i don't remember seeing anybody have a bed rack that had the tent sitting uh, level with the roof line of the truck and then have an awning. So I might have to research that. If anybody has any recommendations, shoot them our way. Um, I did send you a picture. Yeah, where the awning would be mounted higher than the tent, but we'd have to see when everything's open how that works. Well, I think that the way that one works is when you open up the clamshell, whoop, so if you have it, whether the tent's going to, I think it's pointing to the back, right? I think mm -hmm. the way they had it was they, it opens from the back and then the awning will be off to the, one of the sides. Yeah. So I think that's fine. But some of the tents also open the other it way. It depends on how you have your Yeah, tent. so it all depends on which tent we end up getting. Mm -hmm. So if we can do, get away with that, I have, I think Billy Bars has a solution for that. I will have to reach out to them and their customer support is actually very, very good. I wish they could have been at the more expo, um, but unfortunately they weren't. So I'll have to look into that and get back to you guys. But the awning, right? The yeah. awning apparently is a must have for anything as far as going off grid, overlanding. It, it makes things easier apparently. Yeah, so if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have, it starts to even drizzle, if you don't have an awning or something, you have no shelter. You either have to sit in your truck or sit in the in the tent, which if it rains for a long period of time, can get quite boring. So a lot of people recommended getting an awning of some kind. Um, that way you have at least some shelter. You can still like cook some food. You can still just sit outside and like just not be close, like closed up inside um, while you're camping. And we saw some really cool ones that essentially rolled up into a bag that sits next to your tent on this rack. And it just looks like, just a little round cylinder bag and then you unroll it and it just kind of it opens up and you can get them at 180 degrees or 270 degrees which goes pretty much all the way around the truck so you have a lot more coverage um and some of these we found some of the fancier ones don't require support from like the ground the top supports are made so like they're more heavy duty so they just hold themselves up so there's less you know less things you have to put up and take down. They're easier to collapse and there's less things with the poles. I know myself, I would trip over them. <laughs> so the fact they don't have them is a perk for me. And it's also super quick. Um, but again, they're a little on the pricier side, but we're realizing we may have to adjust some of our budgets for what we really want for uh, this trip. Yeah. So the other thing we were considering is going the, the Facebook marketplace route, which is initially used equipment. Um, a lot of the storytellers were telling us uh, some of their equipment, they didn't buy it uh, brand new. They bought it secondhand. So I'm considering that. I have been looking at tents. Um, it, all just, it just happens to be that most of these tents are just so far away. Yeah. And uh, they're heavy, so you don't really want to ship them because the cost of shipping would be a lot. 
yeah so that's that's one of the issues the other issues that i'm having right now is that my my truck i have a 2022 nissan frontier pro 4x there's not a lot of things for it just yet and that's when i'm running into problems um yes i can get a bed rack but it, it might not be available for my truck just yet even though it's, it's been out for almost two years now there's still limitations out there uh, as far as people fabricating for my exact truck. Everything's mainly for Toyota, uh, Ford, uh, Jeeps. Jeeps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like they, they, Jeep and Toyota have the corn, like they have a monopoly almost uh, as far as equipment, lights, tents, racks, uh, mounts for cell phones, like all, all of them, they have very cool stuff where Nissan trucks, I don't know, they just, not yet at least they're not it's not there i will say i think it is because when we were there we paid attention to the vehicles people were using for all this too and toyota tacomas and jeeps either just the wrangler or the gladiator or whatever model like that was almost everyone had one like there was one nissan frontier there mm -hmm. and a couple other like cars and trucks but like those were the two main vehicles that people seem to use for this type of stuff yeah so that's where we are right now um, one of the things that I also wanted to get while I was there, and I talked to some really cool guys from, uh, I think they were Diode Dynamics, uh, lights. Uh, I really want some better lighting, especially for if we're going to be off grid and at night, if it's foggy or anything, having a little additional lighting output will be beneficial. And once again, I run into the issue where wherever I want to mount them, which is on the front of the bumper, it's all plastic. So I will have to figure out a way to either get somebody to fabricate something for me, or I don't know, I just have to figure out a way. So again, if you have anything that you want to input, put them in the comments, send us a DM, and I'll take, an, uh, I'll take a look into it. I just need something to light up the night, especially if one day I'm tired and she needs to drive. Uh, anything that will just help as a driving aid, it will help us a lot. Anything else you want to add to that? I think we covered all the main points and all the the main pieces of equipment that we we need. Awesome. So we'll we'll leave it here. All right. So that wraps up our experience at the More Expo and the equipment that we're still going to be looking for. So stay tuned. We'll post more videos once we actually start getting some of the equipment, which unfortunately I think is going to take a little bit because we are going to try Facebook Marketplace for a while and see what we come to. So patience is going to be key here. Um, but we will post videos once we get things bought <laughs> um, and assembled so because that'll be very exciting mm -hmm. so otherwise just if you want to if you want to see the future videos hit the subscribe button and watch out for notifications bye guys bye.